So how do we evaluate an educational technology? Well, there are really two ways. There's a, a formal way to do it based on a set of criteria and someone would go through and uh, evaluate, say, the interface or how it works in a formal way. But then there's another way and it's, it's very human and it's non-linear and it's just how do people eyeball something? And uh, how we do this will determine whether we form an intention to go and use it and then actually use it. And so this kind of thinking and this kind of methodology called technology acceptance models is very useful for a governance point of view. So our endpoint um, is actual use. This is what we want um, everyone to be able to do with an educational technology. So what are the factors that lead someone to actually use a technology? Well, firstly, they have to form a behavioural intention to use it, and that in turn is influenced um, by their attitude. Uh, so what they think of the technology, um, if they like it, the, the general impression, and from there they'll form the intention and then go on to use it. So what feeds into attitude? That's the million dollar question. And that is the subject of technology acceptance modeling. Um, there are two competing kinds, but generally the factors that people measure when we're looking at technology acceptance models and using them to evaluate a technology, uh, the, the biggest one is usefulness. Whether or not someone perceives that technology is useful for what they want to do, for example, calculating something, accessing a record, uh, accessing a quiz, uh, loading a document, having a discussion, is the technology going to do that? Um, and if it's not, then no one's going to go to want to use it. So that's number one. The, um, number two is Ease of use. Uh, is, the, is the technology easy to use? Um, if it is, then that barrier is conquered. But if it's not easy to use, if the interface is complicated, who's going to want to actually have a positive attitude towards it? No one, so that's really important. The third aspect that's really important is Social norms. Are you the only one thinking of using it? Are you going on your own? Uh, are you going to have supports? Um, are your peers uh, using the technology as well? Are your students wanting to, you to use the technology? Are your bosses wanting you to use the technology? So social influence is uh, generally in the literature the third most important uh, factor in determining your attitude towards it. Um, in social influence is also whether or not the technology is compulsory or not. So, for example, our learning management system. Uh, if, if this is being introduced into your institution and it's the only one you can use, well, the social influence is very strong. Um, and so uh, this is kind of set to one, if you can put it that way. So this is generally for uh, any kind of technology. Um, we form an intent, but then if we go, if we want to use it, but then we find we can't, there's a barrier there, isn't there? And so in here we have something called facilitating conditions. Facilitation. And that would be things like support, uh, training, uh, access, and so on. So all of those practical things for you to go and use the technology. When you turn on your computer, is it there in your start menu? Is it there on your dashboard? Um, so this is important. Um, these are the, the four main uh, determinants of your attitude to use an ed educational technology and how someone would uh, perceive of a technology. Um, but then um, other people have found lots of other, other reasons. Um, that aren't commonly bought into a lot of the main models. And so 
just going to list a few. I think what's important in educational technology is the educational compatibility. And so what this means is whether a technology is going to fit with your style of teaching or your style of learning. Um, let's take virtual reality as an example. If you're a student who likes visual and likes to be inside the moment, if you play video games a lot and that's how you learn about things, then virtual reality is going to be educationally compatible for you. Um, if you're a, a lecturer who likes to test your students often, then quizzing is going to be a technology that you are going to want to use. Um, if your course needs people to discuss ideas for them to, for the students to be able to form uh, a consensus or an understanding, then discussion boards are going to be a technology uh, that you're going to want to deploy in your course. And so there's a bit of a dis uh, distinction here between educational compatibility and usefulness. Um, usefulness is does the technology do what it says it's going to do versus when the technology does what it says it's going to do, is it actually going to be uh, aligned with your methodology of teaching or the way you like to learn? So this is something that isn't really brought up very often and I think it's very important. Um, so these are, are the main factors uh, that people use when they eyeball a technology. So if you go to someone, let's say you're introducing a technology and you say, look, I think you should use this um, artificial intelligent feedback, you're going to have a, a number of different responses from people. They're going to be thinking, oh, do I need that? Is it going to be easy to use and set up? Is anyone else going to use it? Do I need that for my course? And how am I going to be trained on it? And so when we talk about evaluation of technology for education, we have to take into these soft factors, which are very human and um, non-linear, um, as well as uh, the very linear and formal evaluation that we might see elsewhere.